All transatlantic data, traffic, you know, Facebook, phone call, Netflix, emails, whatever, is for the most part carried by submarine cables. I think most people don't realize that that is the case. You have submarine cables crossing the oceans, terminating at very discreet buildings. If this place wasn't here, you would definitely feel that your internet connection is not working as it usually does. I think most people have no idea what this is. This is just another building in the industrial area. My name is Kel Sorensen, and I'm the Marine Maintenance Manager. So I'm responsible for the maintenance of all our sea cables, the Danish Straits, the North Sea and the Atlantic. This is where you transit on what we refer to as the wet part, the dry part, to the terrestrial networks. So this is uh, uh, Telia Carriers uh, network, North American, Europe. In this map you can see the sea cables which we're responsible for. The TAT-14 is the 14th transatlantic transmission system. The TAT-1 was installed in 1957. So the TAT-14 is a ring system connecting uh, Denmark to New Jersey, and then from New Jersey goes back to Europe via the UK. We're really just a highway, <laughs> a highway for data. So this is the demarcation point where the dry part meets the wet part. Yeah, this is the gateway of data coming from the US towards Europe and the other way. Well, the cable terminating here from the U.S. is 7,500 kilometers. You can have somebody in Denmark uh, entering something, a Google search. That request is coming here. For that signal to travel to the U.S. and back will be around 80 milliseconds. I mean, this is what it's all about. I mean, uh, without the fibers, everything else doesn't matter. <laughs> so this is a control room where you uh, monitor uh, the cable system. The cable system is being monitored by different management systems. Green is that you're all good, uh, and if you get the changing colors, these are notifications of technicians working on network elements. This is live traffic, yeah. Live data being carried across the cables. The worst that could happen here, I mean, that's cable cut. That's the worst that can happen. We've had a fall between Sweden and Bornholm, where our cable took a hit. Uh, from an anchor. This one shows the damaged cable section. The cable has been twisted, and that is, this is what happens when it's been hit by an anchor and dragged along the seabed. The armoring wires that should have been surrounding the inner core of the cable is a mess. You have different layers of armoring, a stronger armoring in shallow waters, and then the deeper you go, you require less armoring. When you're out in the middle of the ocean, at, at five kilometer water depth, you have no armoring. The important thing, of course, is the fibers that transport all the data. We have a cable caught on the cable from here to the US. I mean, there's no, there's no data. There's no connectivity. And if you consider the fact that all intercontinental data traffic is carried by around 10 cables, maybe that gives you a good impression. This site is important for one of them. It's indispensable. Most days are filled with routine jobs. Well, it, it happens. We have that cable faults. Wouldn't say it's not a big thing, but it's, uh, it's something that we deal with. I think as a transmission engineer, working as a transmission engineer, you cannot go and think that a lot of people depend on what you're doing. If you get all stressed up during outages, you cannot focus, and then it takes even longer to get it fixed. So uh, if you're that kind of person who gets stressed up, you probably should find something else to do. Well, if I had to say one thing about the internet that they didn't know is the biggest misconception. Most people seem to think that it's all satellites and it's all wireless now. 
and that is just it's so wrong it is a very physical thing but obviously you don't see them this is the beach manhole where we have uh, the land cables meeting uh, the sea cable not much to see <laughs> and from here we have horizontal drill pipe going uh, across the dunes down on the beach extending 500 meters out into the ocean from there we start the lay of the sea cable Damages to our sea cables caused by a number of factors, uh, external aggression like anchors, uh, fishing gear, and then of course you can have like in deep water, landslides, but really more than 90% is caused by fishing gear and, and anchors in shallower waters. And the remaining 10% are sharks, of course. Oh yes, all those sharks, all the time. <laughs> The sea cable that we're standing on top of came all the way from, from New Jersey to land right on this beach. What we see here is the two land markers for the US cable, the rear marker and the front marker. If you look at them from the ocean side and they're aligned, then you know that you are actually right on top of the cable. So if you're about to anchor or if you're a fishing vessel about to deploy your fishing gear, you might wait until you're clear of the cable. Do you say most ships observe this and uh, obey these markers, or do they ignore them? It is our hope that they watch them and obey them. I think there's a lot of things, a lot of infrastructure, that is a potential target. And maybe that's also the reason why there's no big signs on the building. So this is the cable coming in from the outside, from a beach manhole entering the building. We have the, uh, the fiber cable and the power cable. As simple as that. 7,500 kilometers, and now it's here. I find it hard to believe intelligence agencies would try to tap information here. As I see it, that wouldn't make any sense, because there's just too much filtering required. That would be the obvious thing. The TAT-14 system is a ring system, so if you lose one cable, you can route your traffic the other way around and still reach your end target. But also more globally, you have a number of cable routes connecting the same continents. If one cable is down, you still have several other routes. These are one of our cable ships that we call out when we need a repair to be done or an inspection. I'll say the biggest change probably over the last five years is that you have seen uh, what we call content providers. People like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple coming into the market, building their own sea cables. There are new sea cables being built uh, constantly. There's nothing that can replace it. They are here to stay, that's for sure.